All right, ladies and gentlemen. Class recording has started. So yes, all we have is a white screen right now. Let's review. Okay. All right. So when we talked about mechanics back at the beginning, right? Four questions. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Today we want to focus on two of those terms. Right. There we go. So the first term. Velocity. We said velocity answers which of the four questions? How fast. Mm, how fast and also. Where is it? What is the object doing right here? So, okay. what is it doing? general question is what is it doing? So, in order for us to tell what is it doing, we need to know, Aaron, how fast, but also which way. Which way. And. We talked about that velocity. It's terrible. Thanks, thanks for agreeing. All right, so velocity is a relationship between. That was that was legit. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying to like you know get you guys focused. And... All right, velocity. A relationship between displacement and time. How far we went, how long did it take us to go there, right? And units wise, meter per second. Good? Okay. The next term that we talked about, we spent a lot of time on Wednesday talking about it. That was terrible. That was not my fault. Okay, acceleration. First. Acceleration answers which of the four questions? What is going to in the What's going to do next? What's going to happen next? In order for acceleration to occur, what has to happen? There has to be a change in velocity. And acceleration is a relationship between delta V and T, the change in velocity over the time. Units wise, oops. units wise, we said that when we calculate the change in velocity, right, V final minus V initial, we end up with meters per second on the top. Time is measured in seconds, but we also talked about that when usually when we see this unit for or acceleration, it's written as meters per second squared. Okay? Good? All right. Take a look at the first page of your packet. The packet I gave you yesterday. And it's titled Relationship Between Velocity and Acceleration. The first section at the very top of the first page is labeled as non-accelerated motion. If it is non-accelerated motion, what does that mean? Constant velocity, right? Or the acceleration is zero, okay? Constant acceleration is different. We'll get to that in a second, okay? So in this case here, with non-accelerated motion, acceleration is zero. So let's take a look at this picture. It says, the sketch shows a ball rolling at a constant velocity along a level floor. Like we talked about, constant velocity means that acceleration is zero. The ball rolls from the first position shown to the second in one second. They haven't drawn you that picture yet, but that's the second position. Okay? Good there? It says one second worth of time passes from this picture to this picture, okay? So we took like two pictures, superimposed them on one another. This is the original spot. This is one second later, okay? The two positions are one meter apart. If this object travels one meter in one second worth of time, what is its velocity? One meter per second. Right? Sorry, it wasn't a trick question. Was, okay. If it goes one meter and it takes one second to go there, one meter per second. Okay? Good there? All right. Is 
Does that make sense though? Or yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Eddie. We just t you just told me right that if non-accelerated motion, that means what about the velocity? Mm. Means the acceleration is zero, but the velocity is constant. Alex, question? Are you good? Okay. Never mind. Oh. All right. Something that you guys can't do that I can to make my picture even better. Okay? So, that, I mean, you could do that. Okay. That represents one meter. Okay? Because I just drew it over what was on the draw. Okay? If this object is moving with a constant velocity, how much time is going to pass for it to go from here to here? One second. So this is one second after the previous picture. And uh, this is one second after the previous picture. That's actually only three seconds. Because this, this is zero, right? The so one, two, three. Here's four seconds, and here's five seconds, okay? Close. All right, part A. Did you draw the ball, pos ball positions evenly spaced further apart or closer together? Evenly spaced, why? Constant velocity, right? Constant velocity means that for every second that goes by, it's going to go just as far as it did the previous second. All right? Yeah, in this case, yeah, we're not worried about that. We're just, all it tells you in this, Audrey, we get into that more in the next chapter, the why behind all this stuff happening. All, don't worry about that. Right now, all we know is that it's moving with constant velocity. It's all we care about. Okay? We don't, we're, we're gonna, we want to answer where, what, what why? next, and when, but why is the next chapter, okay? We won't get into why until the next chapter. Why and how are forces, okay? All right, so part B, the ball reaches the wall with a speed of what? One meter per second, and how long does it take to get there? Five seconds, because it was five meters that it had to go it goes one meter every second, five seconds to get there. Okay? Good there. Okay. Questions? No. Nope. <laughs> All right. So, the second half of the page switches from non-accelerated motion to accelerated motion. If there is acceleration, what has to be occurring? How about the velocity has to change, right? In this situation specifically, a ball rolling down a hill, what type of change occurs? positive acceleration or physically this ball does what? It goes faster and faster and faster and faster as it rolls down the hill. Okay? Now, like the previous picture, we've drawn this ball at different positions on the ramp. Each picture will always represent one second of time. Each picture represents one second worth of time, okay? That's going to be true of all the pictures that we're drawing today. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Okay, the little writing here, right? An object starting from rest gains speed when it undergoes a uniform acceleration. Constant velocity means it keeps going the same speed the whole time. Constant or uniform acceleration means it constantly accelerates 
it keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, or slower and slower and slower and slower. In this case, faster though. Okay. All right. It says the ramp below is tilted, so a ball picks up speed, and its acceleration is two meters per second squared. I'm going to rewrite that to look like this. Whether you write it as two meters per second squared or the way I wrote it, it is describing the same thing. What? Two meters per second over one second. Sorry, that's an S. So. That's an S. So. So. Two meters per second over one second. Okay? So, question. If an object has an acceleration of two meters per second squared, what has to happen? The velocity has to change two meters per second every second. An acceleration of two meters per second squared means that the velocity changes by two for every second that goes by. Okay? Well, no. It increases by two. Okay? You'll see that that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to double. That's something different. So it's going to increase by two, every second goes by. Right. Say again? Every second goes by, another second. Okay. So, all right. So let's, so here. So we'll go through the picture, okay? Here is the first position of the ball, okay? At the very, very top of the ramp, right when you let it go from the top of the ramp, at the very instant that you let it go, it's not moving. Its velocity is zero. Okay? But now you let it go, starting at zero, but now what starts happening to it? Faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. One second later, which is the next picture, one second of time has gone by. If the acceleration is two meters per second squared, the velocity has to change from zero to two. Okay? Go ahead. The next picture, one second worth of time, so the velocity has to do what? Go up by two. So that means that the velocity here will be four meters per second because it went up by two. The next picture, one second goes by. What has to happen to the velocity? It has to go up by two, so it ends up at six. The next picture. One second goes by, so the velocity has to go up by two. So the velocity here will be eight. Next picture, one second goes by, velocity has to increase by two. two. So the velocity at the end is going to be ten. ten. Good, good. So there, um, from the point zero like, to the next ball or whatever, yep. the pictures, the space in between them is like bigger. Ah, bigger. hold on to that second thought for just a second. Okay. All right. Are we good with where these numbers came from? Yeah. A nice pattern developing here, right? Every second goes up by two. What if they gave you velocity zero and velocity four? If they gave you what? Hold on to that question. Okay. 
Actually, dude, you want to see the next ramp? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Okay? We'll get there. All right. Okay? All right. A nice pattern developing here. There is a mathematical equation that represents this pattern. How the velocity changes based on the acceleration. That equation looks like this. Okay? This is for any ramp where acceleration is occurring. This represents the relationship between how velocity changes based on the acceleration. Vf is going to represent what in that equation? Final velocity. V initial represents initial velocity. A is acceleration and T is time. On this ramp specifically, what was the velocity initial? Zero. So this term for our ramp kind of goes away, right? Counting how many pictures there are. This is the beginning, this is time zero. So this is one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, right? It takes five seconds to get down the ramp. So at the bottom of the ramp, T would be five. If we know that the acceleration was two, guess what the final velocity should be at the bottom of the ramp? 10, Ten just like we got there, okay? Now, this equation would also work if instead of just letting the ball go at the top of the ramp and its initial velocity being zero, if we like bold it down the ramp, right? Where it was already moving when it got to the top of the ramp. Then VI wouldn't be zero, but we would still just solve the equation, plugging in two for the acceleration, plugging in however fast we bold it here, and then however long it took us to get down the ramp. Okay? Yeah. Libby, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, no, that's an A, sorry. Okay. Angela, good. Now, we could, all of these pictures that we have here are nice one second intervals. So T is always one, two, three, four, or five. But let's say we wanted to know how fast it was going like 3.42 seconds after we let it down, go down the ramp. That would be T. And then we would find out how fast it was going after it had been rolling down the hill for 3.2 seconds. Or if this ramp was longer, we could find out how fast it was going after 8 seconds or 10 seconds, right? By plugging in 8 or 10 for T, okay? But it'll work for any time, not just the one second intervals. We start with one second intervals because that's easy to show the pattern, but when you put that together, you end up with that general equation, okay? It's really good. So is the distance everything is increasing? Yes, and that's where we're going with the next picture. Okay? All right. Good with this so far. Okay. Now, let's address that. Okay? I'm going to go to a blank I'm going to go to a blank page just to give me more room to write, okay? okay. No, not a blank space. No. I did the next one too. I mean, that's that's stuck in my head. That's stuck in my head 14 hours a day. It's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah, for like fourteen, like fourteen hours a day, I sing it to myself, so basically. Weird. Like, you know, so, <laughs> so damn catchy. <laughs> it's like can't help it. So. All right, now let's address this issue that we've been so anxious to get to. Two pages ago, what about what did we see about the space between the pictures? Nice and even, because. Constant velocity, no acceleration. What do we see about the spaces between the pictures here? Yes. Keep getting faster. Julian, they keep getting they, they keep getting farther apart because what keeps happening to this object? Velocity, velocity is uniform acceleration. Whoa. 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 
uniform acceleration. Oh, man. Dang. Right? <laughs> Look, right there. So, okay. All right, Alex, go ahead. Yep, so this would be like if we took this picture not of the ball rolling down the ramp, but rolling up the ramp, right? They keep getting smaller, smaller, smaller because it keeps going slower. Valentina, go ahead. No, we have to try pretty well. The short answer is not on its own. Okay, if we just let something like go, it won't maintain a constant velocity. We could make it maintain a constant velocity if we like keep pushing it. And those relationships that we saw two pictures ago would hold true for constant velocity, but not on its own because of friction, basically. Okay. So, okay. Angela, question. Good. So, say we added another ramp. Other than the ramp yeah. So, yeah. That these pictures would look exactly the same, but they're flipped, right? And there would, there would be like a mirror. Like if this was like if this was like down and then back up, it would be a mirror image, right? And we'll talk about that when we talk about gravity on Monday. Okay. All right, so let's address these pictures here, okay? The very first thing we wrote down today looked like this, okay? So we talked about velocity as a relationship between displacement and time, okay? I'm going to modify that equation slightly for this picture and change it to look like this. Okay, so this equation, right? The first thing we wrote down today was that, or the first, we didn't write this down today, the first thing we talked about today was velocity is a relationship between displacement and time. For this ramp, it's hard to say what the velocity is because what keeps happening to the velocity? It keeps changing all the time. It's easy to talk about velocity on this picture because it never changes. But on this picture, the velocity keeps changing the whole time. So instead of just saying velocity equals displacement over time, we're going to talk about the average velocity. Okay? All right, with that being said, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can focus on one certain part of the picture. And that certain part of the picture that I'm going to focus on to begin with is this interval from here to here. Okay? Just from the first picture, or from the beginning to one second after it's rolling down the ramp. Okay? Now, based on this equation, relationship between displacement and time gives us the average velocity. We know each picture represents what? What's the one thing that I keep? Each picture represents one second. Okay? So, if we apply that here, we know that from this pink highlighted section, we're representing one second worth of time because it goes from picture to picture. They've given us a little bit of information here that the distance that that object covers is one meter. Okay? Now, that might be confusing to some of you because the velocity that we wrote down was two meters per second. Right? If this is one second, but the velocity is two, how did it only go one meter? Right? Okay. Was this ball traveling two meters per second the entire time? No. It gradually sped up to two meters per second. If it was going two meters per second the whole time, right? 
it would look like this. Okay? But it gradually increases to 2 meters per second. All right? So now let's talk about how that feeds in to this equation. We've already established that the time during this pink highlighted section is how long? One second. One second. And the distance or the displacement during that one second is only one meter. So if we have one meter over one second, what is the average velocity during that pink highlighted section have to be one meter per second, okay? Follow me on that. Sorry, do you follow me on that, okay? Okay, now, let's talk about how these two numbers reinforce that the average velocity is one meter per second. Ah, it's good. So, taking what you just said, Alex, the velocity average is the midpoint between where the ball starts and where the ball finishes. Okay? The initial velocity of the ball during this pink section was what? The final velocity of the pink ball during this section is 2. To find the average between them, what are you going to do? Add them together, divide by 2. If you add 0 and 2 together, you get 2. If you divide by 2, because that's how you take the average of something, right? One. You get 1. And that's what we said the average velocity had to be. Okay? So would the average, so it would be okay to say that the average velocity would have to be the initial uh, minus the final? Not initial minus final, I initial... Mean, Initial velocity plus final, plus final velocity divided by 2. That's just how we calculate the average of something, right? Okay? Let's go to, let's go to the next one, okay? All right. So, next section that I want to focus on is this blue section right here. Okay? Now, it doesn't give us the distance like it did during the pink section. However, they did give us the total distance for those first two pictures, meaning that this individual blue section, um, only three. the total is four. <laughs> Did you believe her? Was that the problem? Like, no, I was just like, I don't know, I thought she was trying to Okay. <laughs> well, if this total is four, right, and this little pink section is oh, one. No, no, no. Just the blue for now. Just the blue. <laughs> All right. Good there. Okay. So now, let's apply this equation to just the blue section, okay? Because it's picture to picture, how much time are we talking about? Picture to picture is only how much time? One second, okay? It would be two total seconds, but we're, not, we're only worried about the blue section right now. Blue picture to picture, one second. Displacement during the blue section, how far did it go? Three meters. Okay? Three meters divided by one second tells us that the average velocity has to be how much? Three meters per second. That's one way we can figure out the average velocity. You guys also discovered that another way that you can figure out the average velocity is to go
Okay? Right? We just talked about that. If these are both average velocity, they have to be the same. So regardless of how we calculate it, it has to give us the same value. If we look at just the blue section, the initial velocity during the blue section was what? Two. Two. The final velocity of the blue section is four. You add those together, you get six. Divided by two is? Go ahead, Valentin. Just the blue section, okay? Let's not go together yet. All right, we'll get there eventually. Angela, go ahead. That is how fast it's going at that picture. But remember, what's happening the entire time from picture to picture? It's getting faster and faster and faster. It's only going four meters per second at that point where that picture shows up. The rest of the time, it's gradually speeding up to get to four. That's why it's hard for us to talk about the velocity at a singular point when it's accelerating, and that's why we have to kind of talk about the average velocity. During the blue section, it gradually speeds up from two to four. That means half of the time, three's the middle, right? Half of the time it's going less than three, half of the time it's going more than three. So the average is three. Does that make sense? So the average Because it's the halfway between zero and four, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's go and let's focus on this section. Okay? Okay. Now, the distance is missing. And the total distance is missing, so we can't just do some subtraction and figure it out. So we're going to have to put a couple of things together. All right? Because we've gone picture to picture, how much time are we dealing with? One second. Just the green. Okay? Just the green represents one second at a time. Now, right, we know that the velocity here is what? Let me do this. They're not, yeah, okay. Hold on. because the average changes depending on the time interval you're talking about. So you have to keep that time interval, but hold on because we may or may not get there. We'll see. So. All right. So during this interval right here, it starts at four meters per second, just the green. Starts at four, ends at six. So the average velocity during that time is what? Five. Got it? During just the green section, it starts at four. It's going four at the beginning of the green section. It's going six at the end of the green section. So the average is five. This equation right here, applying this equation just to the green section, right? We just calculated that the average velocity was five we realize that we go picture to picture, that's one second. What has to go on the top of that fraction? Sorry, hold on a second. What has to go on the top of that fraction to make five equal five? Five. 
So that means that during this interval, it travels five meters. And that means that the total distance from the beginning of the ramp to this spot here then would be what? Just add the three together. Okay. Julie, good. Now we're starting to add the pattern, right? Yep. Okay. So here, let's move this here. Let's move this. Oh, come on. I'm really not going to get oh, Are you kidding me? That angers me so very much. I'm glad some, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Can you? Oh, oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Come on. For real? Well, see, this picture is in the way. So, okay. Go. Oh. Jesus. Come on, Mr. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's go here. Oh, yeah. Glad, glad this is on recording, everybody. So, all right. Oh, it's okay. I thought it was fine. But I was right too, so. Nobody hears what you guys can say, though. So it's, really? It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. All right, so now, real quick, without showing you the calculations, you guys have this, you guys have this, right? And we just discussed briefly that if we're talking about this section right here, okay, that, yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> that would be seven. Okay, and then this last interval would be nine. Okay, go on, Tina, go ahead. So X stands for distance, technically stands for displacement, but same idea in this case because they're going in a straight line. Okay. So we can say the average velocity is equal to the time to the meters that it runs? In this case, yes, although not you will, cases. not in all cases, okay? In this case, yes, because the intervals, Audrey, that we're dealing with here are all how long? One second. So the bottom of this fraction is always one, right? If we were talking about more than one second, you couldn't do that. That's what we'll do a little bit on Monday. Angela, go ahead. So let's do, okay. What would it be? Now, so Angela brings up a good point, and it's actually something that Audrey just talked about too, okay? So here, let's do this, okay? I'm going to talk here, let's talk about the interval from here to here, okay? Now, because we've filled in all of these individual distances, we could just add the four of them up, pink, blue, green, and yellow to give us purple, okay? We could do that, we'd get 16, we'd be fine, okay? But let's talk about another way to do it, okay? Angela, if we talk about that purple's interval as a, as a singular section, okay? The initial velocity at the beginning of the purple is what? Zero. The final velocity at the end of the purple is eight. So the average velocity is four, okay? However, four goes here, okay? In, well, yeah, that's where four would get plugged into that equation, right? Okay, so here, we'll do that. Okay. So four goes here, all right? But the thing that's different, you just asked about it, how many seconds are we dealing with now? It's not just one second, it's four seconds. Solve for x, right? What's x going to be? 16, just like that. You could, it just takes longer to do, 
because you got to do each individual section, right? But if you right, okay. But yeah, we'll, we'll actually work on that more on Monday. Okay. All right, hold on one second. Wait, freeze, freeze, freeze. Okay. So Monday, we will do another ramp, okay, and then hopefully we will get to the back page which deals with when we drop something because gravity causes things to constantly accelerate just at a different rate than rolling down a ramp. So the relationships are all the same, just the numbers are different, okay? So we'll do that on Monday. I realize, you know, it's great and we did a good job. Now you gotta try and remember how to do it like three days from now, so that's like, okay. public You think? Yeah. I mean, these are, 